Hey guys, I'm Akshay from vbomb.com and MediaTek recently launched the Dimensity 1000, the company's first SoC with an integrated 5G modem, supports for NSA and SA modes and a lot more. It definitely looks like a power pack chipset and that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. But before we get started, how about you hit the bell icon to get notified every time we post an awesome new video. Now that you've done that, let's get started. So first things first, let's take a look at the specifications on this chipset. The Dimensity 1000 is a 7 nanometer chipset and uses the big little core architecture. The chip has 4 high performance Cortex A77 cores clocked at 2.6 GHz and 4 high efficiency Cortex A55 cores. For gaming and graphics heavy use cases, the chipset packs in the Mali G77 MC9 GPU. So yeah, the specs here are definitely flagship grade and that's exactly what MediaTek is aiming this chipset at. Flagship smartphones with 5G support, which is going to be pretty much every smartphone in 2020. That means this chipset is going head to head against the likes of the upcoming Snapdragon 865, the recently announced Kirin 995 g and the Exynos 980. Putting these side by side, we can see that both the Kirin 990 and the Dimensity 1000 are built on the 7 nanometer process, while the Exynos 980 is built on the 8 nanometer process. Plus, while the MediaTek Dimensity 1000 actually has a lower clock speed in the high performance cores as compared to the Kirin 990, it has a higher clock speed in the high efficiency cores as compared to the Kirin 990 and the Exynos 980. So yeah, we can expect pure CPU performance to be pretty good on this chipset. In terms of graphics as well, the MediaTek Dimensity comes with the Mali G77 GPU as compared to Mali G76 on the others. Now, while we haven't really seen any phones powered by the Dimensity 1000 so far, according to ARM, the G77 brings a 30% performance improvement and 30% better energy efficiency as compared to Mali G76, which is really impressive. Also, the benchmarks released by MediaTek show that the Dimensity 1000 is a solid performer. I mean, take a look at this Antutu score here. That's over 500,000. Even in Geekbench, the Dimensity 1000 scores great, scoring 3811 in the single core and 13,136 in the multi-core test. I am definitely looking forward to comparing the Dimensity 1000 against the Kirin 995 g and the Snapdragon 865 once manufacturers start launching phones with these chipsets. But performance isn't everything here. The Dimensity 1000 also brings a number of impressive camera features. For starters, the chipset brings a 5-core ISP that can support sensors up to 80 megapixels or combinations such as 32 megapixels plus 16 megapixels and more. However, the more interesting part is that the chipset automatically matches the right sensor size with the most appropriate ISP for better power efficiency. Now, that is cool. The Dimensity 1000 is also the world's first chipset to support multi-exposure 4K HDR video and it reportedly performs three times faster than regular ISPs and captures short, medium and long exposures for every single frame of the video. Talk about going above and beyond what most people do with their smartphones. But cameras and performance aside, this here is a 5G chipset, so let's talk about some of the 5G-centric features because it brings a lot of those as well. The MediaTek Dimensity 1000 comes fully integrated with a 5G modem that's capable of reaching download speeds up to 4.7 Gbps and upload speeds up to 2.5 Gbps. It's important to note that this here is a 5G NR sub 6 GHz modem, which means it's not supporting millimeter wave 5G unlike Qualcomm's X55 modem, which supports both 5G NR sub 6 GHz and millimeter wave. Anyway, since the Dimensity 1000 has an integrated 5G solution, it should be better in terms of power efficiency as compared to chipsets that use an external 5G modem, such as the Snapdragon 855 with its X50 5G modem. That's what MediaTek says, but I haven't tested this out, so I can't say for sure what difference in power efficiency is made by this factor. More interesting, however, is the fact that the Dimensity 1000 is the world's first chipset to support dual 5G SIM technology, which is pretty impressive. Plus, while we're talking about connectivity, the chipset also brings integrated Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1. With Wi-Fi 6, you can expect speeds of over 1 Gbps, and that's pretty damn impressive as well. Apart from that, the chipset can support Full HD Plus displays up to 120Hz and 2K displays up to 90Hz, which is pretty much on par with flagship processors. It can encode and decode 4K60 videos and it's the world's first smartphone chipset to support AV1 decode. If you don't know what that is, it's an open format that major streaming companies like Netflix are thinking of switching to and having hardware support for AV1 decode is going to be useful for sure. 
There's a lot more to the MediaTek Dimensity 1000. I mean, it has a brand new AI processing unit, APU 3.0, which pushed it to the top of the charts in AI benchmarks with its 4.5 T ops processing power. I mean, the chipset scores 56,158 points in the AI benchmark. That's insane. Plus, the positioning system with the MediaTek Dimensity 1000 should be pretty impressive because it has 25 extra L5 bands, according to MediaTek. Clearly, the Dimensity 1000 is an ambitious SoC that's going to compete against the flagship chipsets in 2020, including the soon-to-be-announced Snapdragon 865. MediaTek says that this chipset is aimed at premium flagship smartphones and rumor suggests that it may make an appearance in the Redmi K30 series that's going to be launched on December 10th and that should be interesting as well. I can't wait to check it out. Look, the Dimensity 1000 will probably not be able to outperform the Snapdragon 865, but MediaTek chipsets have had a history of giving better price to performance ratios. I mean, just look at the Helio G90T. So yeah, if MediaTek is able to hit that sweet spot of price versus performance with the Dimensity 1000, I think this chipset might be the one that a lot of smartphone manufacturers go for for their 5G-powered flagships. And that to me is very interesting. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, give this video a like and share it with your friends. Lastly, subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. That's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.